Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for having Ricky and I today. We are talking about strategies for the return to entertainment districts, really talking about drawing people back together. So first, a little introduction about Populous. Uh, we are a global design firm. We specialize in large public venues. Really, we design the places where people love to be together like Tourist Park and the Battery in Atlanta that has the baseball stadium as the anchor and then a 365 activation of mixed use area with shopping and dining adjacent to it. Fiserv Forum in the Deer District, heart of Milwaukee, where you'll find beer gardens and movie nights and activations all year long. And then the International Convention Center in Sydney, which is right in Darling Harbor and adjacent to the business districts. So for the last 35 plus years of our company's history, innovation has been the cornerstone of all the work that we do and been recognized as one of the leading innovative companies uh, by Fast Company which has been great. I have to say though, innovation at its heart is really about problem solving. And the current situation with COVID and imagining what the future looks like post COVID has really gotten us thinking about ways that we can reimagine what public spaces and places that bring people together are gonna look like and feel like. So let's talk about where we are now and the look ahead. Uh, we're all too um, kind of familiar these days with the CDC diagram on flattening the curve. Um, this is the hammer and dance approach. Uh, it's a measure of when we act and when we don't act. Um, the hammer refers to acting quickly and aggressively with stay at home orders and mitigation measures in an effort to flatten the curve after it peaks. And it seeks to um, keep the spread um, at a manageable level. And once controlled, uh, the dance addressed is a long-term strategy for containment within a period of time in the future. Um, you'll see that the white circle at the top um, shows the peak of the inf infections. So what does this all mean? The, the next, um, this diagram um, shows the COVID-19 growth curve and peak dates um, by state. Um, there's 50 states and you see and plus DC, uh, which is on the left side. Um, and then you see the months at the bottom of the chart. And then uh, the date of the peak uh, before flattening the curve is on the right side. Um, again, the circle uh, shows the infection um, of the peak infection of that state. And you can see that every state is different, uh, where some states peak early while others have only peaked in the last uh, week or so. So what does this all mean for reopening our cities and entertainment districts? Um, you know, the quick answer is that there is no fit all strategy or one fits all strategy. So the intersection of public health and uh, urban design and planning share common uh, missions and perspectives. Uh, both aim to improve human well-being. Uh, they manage complex social systems and are community based um, participatory methods. Uh, so now I think we see more clearly um, the intersection between these two and the importance of encouraging outdoor experiences and activities in our parks and open spaces. And um, again, how do we deal with uh, the physical realm and the psychological impacts of our uh, built environment? You know, this pandemic has um, kind of forced us to kind of think differently um, as most of us have never really faced um, anything similar. Uh, but it's all critical for um, so cities to kind of it's critical for cities to kind of reopen for our economy and also for our social well-being. Um, so while we work through this kind of preparedness plan um, strategies and guidelines, um, the stay at home transition to the opening uh, reopening stage, um, there's a sort of transitional or transformational period. You know, it's a time of what we call business um, unusual. Uh, where we think beyond best practices and, be, and pursue opportunities uh, for new approaches. You know, some of these strategies uh, can succeed. Uh, some might have challenges as we get through that dance cycle uh, from the hammer and dance. Um, but the successful strategies um, can then redefine best practice and through adjustments and kind of urban policy and adoption, 
they may become permanent changes uh, as we aim towards no normalcy. So every state, again, every county, every city uh, has very specific health concerns and health recommendations. Um, there are multiple players with recommendations, but there's really no um, cookie cutter approach. Here um, are the CDC's recommendations, and uh, you know we've added some additional considerations, uh, which are defined by the three categories of social awareness, design and planning, and technology. And we'll talk about some of these uh, in our strategies for reopening uh, a little bit later. So as I've mentioned before, there's no single roadmap or solution to reopening our cities. Uh, but to be effective, we must think about um, the kind of connected systems and the network of policies and procedures that each play uh, an important role. Um, in this case, we define these as aspects of safety, um, elements of creative design, and how the community participates and embraces current and next steps. You know, each of these aspects are constantly moving, and uh, but they must be constantly connected as well. So five strategies for the return to entertainment districts just to summarize here. First, we need to prioritize the experience and the environment for the people, then establish and enhance mobility frameworks, leverage the public realm, prepare our large scale civic assets and provide clear communication and embrace technology. We'll go through each one here. First up, we really need to determine experiences that prioritize the environment for the people. People make the place, not the other way around. So it's really about creating scenarios that understand the market segmentation and utilize techniques like journey mapping and user experience audits. We need to be open to deploying unconventional tools, guidelines, and temporary transformations that align with our post-pandemic needs. So to start with, it's really important to understand who the users are, where they're traveling, and anticipate and then mitigate any pain points that they may encounter. This is an example journey map of a particular user and a day in a life of going through downtown and urban environments in a typical day using bicycles, transportation, uh, rapid transit, and pedestrian pathways to get through all the destinations. Understanding where the users are going and in what sequence and with whom and when will really help us to anticipate what they'll need. And it's really important to understand those needs and support the adherence to those CDC guidelines if we want them to be successful. So this is an example of in Minnesota hand wash stations and face masks vending machines being positioned at strategic locations within the city to help support that social compliance. Each of us needs to take on that personal responsibility to adhere to the CDC guidelines. And we really need to embrace new ways of activating our urban spaces. We can learn a lot from temporary events like Super Bowl Live, for instance, on how we can really blur the boundaries uh, between traditional urban environments and ways that we might be able to activate them in a temporary fashion. So the second strategy um, is getting there and back and establishing a mobility framework. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about connected strategies, you know, thinking beyond a single local solution, uh, providing opportunities for future uh, mobility infrastructure and then working with transit agencies uh, to establish administrative controls and design controls. So, you know, it's critical uh, that we understand that there will be a variety of obstacles from your home to get to downtown and vice versa. Um, and while you're at your destination, there'll also be local obstacles and barriers to overcome. Um, so a connected strategy where we stitch together uh, the kind of sequence of these local solutions uh, may help people kind of overcome their anxieties and, you know, from getting from one place to the other. You know, during this pandemic, it's, it's been incredible. You know, people have embraced bicycles and scooters, uh, you know, for both uh, 
well-being and also to find temporary alternatives uh, to mass transit and cars. Um, and so we need to continue to enhance our city's uh, bicycle and, and scooter infrastructure to continue this great new healthy habit. You know, we also need to, uh, again, work with our transit agencies to begin to establish these administrative controls, which are kind of training policies and procedures and some of the design controls, uh, which um, have an impact on the kind of physical and psychological. So it could be these plexiglass uh, barriers, um, hand sanitizing stations, uh, et cetera. But as transit agencies uh, uh, play a significant role in helping the public, they can make the public feel a lot more comfortable, uh, again, to use mass transit. So the third strategy is really about leveraging the public realm and bring breaking down all those barriers between what's considered interior and exterior space. We want to create healthy streets and be really creative about how we use our streets and our alleys. We want to provide more street facing al fresco dining and we want to consider multi use transformational spaces and rethink the effectiveness of surface parking lots. So using principles of tactical urbanism to reactivate streetscapes with pedestrian first temporary environments. This could be any kind of, of pop up food, uh, food and beverage, retail, music, parklets, uh, just taking back that space for uh, people to enjoy. The idea of expanding the boundaries of a typical venue like a restaurant to take up part of that footprint that's part of our, our streets uh, to enhance that experience and to give, give all the patrons room to spread out is one that really has a lot of promise and we're seeing uh, emerging. And also just using our, our park spaces to embrace bringing together people outdoors in exterior spaces using pop-up food trucks and entertainment and event opportunities that support social distancing and overall just enhance the experience for people to come together. And then thinking big about how we can leverage existing surface lots for new opportunities for entertainment and community gathering, whether that's, you know, tailgating events, um, you know, sort of drive-in movie experiences, uh, bringing lots of different kinds of opportunities and, and open places for people to gather. Uh, there's a lot we could do with those surface plots. So the fourth one is uh, preparing our large scale civic assets. Um, and we all know that these large scale civic assets bring, um, you know, a large group of people. Um, so the first one is local businesses should work in tandem. Uh, with large venue owners so that they can be prepared to accommodate larger groups of people. And the second item there is civic asset operators can post, uh, can publish post pandemic guidelines uh, for use by surrounding local businesses. So local businesses um, can work in tandem with large venue owners so that they can be prepared to accommodate these large groups of people. You know, one way to achieve this is to have community stakeholder engagement to share ideas and concerns for reopening our public spaces and our businesses. And most importantly, um, sort of at the completion of these workshops, those results can be captured and summarized as post pandemic guidelines for use by local businesses, uh, stakeholders uh, and the community. Okay, last but not least, it's super important to provide clear communication and embrace technology. We're finding more and more that people today really want to understand what to expect when they come back together and re-engage with the public space. So we need to provide clear communication to share information and manage user expectations. We also need to embrace technology, touchless apps and real-time data, as this can really help to manage uh, the psychological impact of coming back together and that potential anxiety that some of our people might be experiencing. So clear signage and wayfinding is critical. Provide information. It can help ensure that the users know the rules of engagement for each space so that they clearly understand 
uh, what the guidelines are for coming back together, whether that's wearing a mask or hand washing, using social distance or where they can find amenities and different uh, opportunities. Uh, signage and wayfinding will go a long way to help to uh, manage expectations and provide a great experience. And so COVID-19 has demonstrated the kind of importance of technology and digital uh, readiness. Um, it affects how we learn, you know, how we work, how we do business, and how we stay social. Um, as we embrace the technology, you know, real-time data can really help us understand, you know, air quality, CO2 levels, and like occupancy rates of spaces um, that are then displayed on our mobile devices to keep us all informed. And so, you know, as we think about um, the post pandemic and the reopening of our kind of amazing cities and entertainment districts, you know, this is really our time to uh, dream big, stay creative and be actionable. And by innovating around new ways to draw people together, uh, cities have an opportunity to flourish and emerge more resilient than ever. So we welcome so you to connect with questions. us. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any further questions or comments, please don't hesitate to get in touch.